So let's replace a background with a layer mask. I'm going to select this background and this image, and I'm going to go to Tools, Photoshop, and Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Let it do the work for me. If you ever get this, again, it's just a bug. We know Photoshop's not doing anything, so just click Yes. So notice it loaded the files for me. Now, one thing I want you to notice is these are two differently sized files. That's why they didn't come in correctly or they didn't come in, you know, sized together. And that's okay. We already know how to free transform to get these to match and recrop. But I actually want to show you a different way to get one image inside the other. I'm going to close this. Don't save. I'm going to go back. And what I'm going to do is just open this one image, just that one. Command zero to fit in screen. And then I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go down to place embedded. This is basically going to go grab whatever image I choose and it's going to embed it in this image as a smart object. So I'm going to grab replace background 1B. Choose it, verify it over here, slide that over so you can see, and I'm going to click place. That's going to put the image and it's going to auto resize it to fit inside the image and it knows it's not going to be perfect, so it's going to give me some free transform handles automatically so I can kind of drag it up or down or whatever it is I want. For now, I'll make this a little bigger, make sure I see all of his body and just click OK. Now notice that it is a smart object and it doesn't need to be a smart object for this technique to work. So if I don't want it as a smart object, all I have to do is right click on that layer and choose rasterize layer. And that means it's going to squish everything down to basically a regular flattened JPEG layer for just this one layer. So I'm going to hit rasterize layer. It is no longer a smart object. See how that disappeared? I'm going to go choose the quick selection tool. I'm going to come choose the select subject tool. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure cloud is checked because it's going to give better results. I'll click select subject and it figured out what the subject is. And it did a really good job. It did miss this little part behind between his arms and it looks like it missed his eyeglasses. I'll zoom in with the command and space bar to see that, see how it missed his eyeglasses. And that's OK. We can still tweak this. And actually, while I'm right here, still on the quick selection tool. I'll make my brush a little smaller and see what happened when I started adding that. It deselected all the other stuff. So I'll make Command Z to go back one step. I hold down the Shift key because I want to add to the selection that already exists. And it's not letting me. All these tones are very similar, right? So I'm hit Command Z. So really what I need is I have to go into a custom tool. Maybe the, I'm going to do the polygon or lasso tool. It gives me a bit more control. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click inside the selection. Remember, he's the one that's selected. So I'm just going to click randomly in here, right? And then my next click is going to lock that line in place. And I'm just going to move, click, move, click, move, click. So you're asking yourself, well, why is he doing this? Why isn't he using the lasso tool where it's organic and you can kind of draw it. Well, if you're using a Wacom tablet or some kind of graphics tablet where you're using like a pen on a surface, then yeah, do that. But if you're using a mouse, sometimes it's kind of hard to draw these nice straight lines with a mouse. So, but I find the polygon or lasso tool, I can, all, I can get the similar effect, but kind of easier just by going a little bit on these curved areas and clicking, click, 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 click. Now go back inside his head. Now double click anywhere in here and it'll close the loop. Watch. Boom. See how it, it made that selection perfect. It looks like I missed his mustache. So I'll do the same thing. Click inside the selection. I'm holding down my shift key while I'm doing this. And double click. Boom. And now I'll, I'll hold the space bar to pan around. Looks like we messed up up here. So I'm gonna hold down the option key. Click outside of the selection. Click. Click down to the brim of the hat. Click. Click. Click now, double click out here, and it got rid of that. So I'm panning around the edges, panning around the edges, panning around the edges, making sure it did a good job. It looks like it did a great job. Now, didn't I say it messed up over here? Yeah, it messed up over here. So I hold down the Alt or Option key and click, click, click outside, click, 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 double click, boom. Oh, now if you ever get it where it double clicked or or a third clicked or something, and it and wants to start redoing it, just click wants to get out of that. And if all your selection disappears, remember, you know how to just hit Command Z to step back until you see it again. I'm going to hit Command Zero to fit in screen. And since these marching ants are telling me where my active selection is, I'm just going to add a layer mask so it will build that for me. Boom. Did that automatically. So I want this to be the background. So I don't have to remove that boat because I don't want the boat to be distracting to the viewer. I hit the V for the move tool and I'll slide him over just a touch. Actually, I don't want him dead center. 
And you also have sort of the rule of thirds rules where you need the bigger negative space in the direction of the gaze typically or the direction of travel. Because you do feel how this feels kind of off balance where everything behind him is, is wasted. So either you have to break the rule by going way off center this way, or you've got to cater to the rule and come back more this way. I may decide just to go ahead and hit Command-T for tree transform. Make him a touch bigger. That way it's very easy to camouflage that boat. I'll hit Enter. I'm going to hit C for the crop tool. And I'm just going to pull from the bottom by clicking and dragging, something like that. And I'd probably go ahead and pull this down just a touch. Hit Enter. Okay, I love where this is going. I have just replaced my background. So in, and remember, you can hide a layer mask temporarily just by holding the shift key and clicking on it. It'll turn off that layer mask. So this is the original image. And for some whatever reason, I wanted this kind of blue nature lake area. So that's why we did this. But now we need to integrate them because they're obviously shot on two different days. And he's lit in a way that looks like it's out in a bright and sunny day, which the background is. But the colors don't quite match. So I'm going to show you an old school technique. If you click on the background, Command J to duplicate it, drag it up, see the blue line, let go, go up to filter, go down to blur, and choose the very first one called average. It's going to average every single color, and it's going to give you the averaged color on that one layer. Then you come over to your blend modes and go down to color. Now, obviously, we don't want to contaminate the scene, so I'll hold down the option key and clip it, right? So now it's just adding the color to him, but obviously we don't want like a black and white photograph that's just been tinted blue. So you've really got to lower that volume, right? Lower the opacity significantly. A scrubby slider is when you hover over a word and your cursor changes to a left or right pointing arrow and you just drag it back and forth to vary the opacity. Significantly, just to give a little bit of that color to the person in the scene. So I, I like that. I do think it's washing out the face too much with that blue. So I'll add a layer mask. Tap B for the brush. There we go. Left bracket key, go a little smaller. Notice I'm at 80%. I'll bring back 80% of that color. Boom. I already like it. Now, what one other thing would I do? Well, I feel like the background's a tiny bit distracting in how focused it is. And we already know how to do this, right? If I come to this background layer, right-click on it, convert to smart object, go up to filter, down to blur, over to Gaussian blur, See, now I can make that background as shallow as I want. So we're just basically going for a little bit of a shallower depth of field. Still want to be able to recognize the scene, but I want the focus to be on this person. I'll click OK. And there we go. You've just replaced an entire background using a layer mask. And then we actually added a custom color treatment. And then we use smart filters to blur that background. So save this out. Again, leave it as the .psd, Photoshop, embed the color profile, click save. Hey, if you like this video and it helps, you can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. Whoa. Yes! <laughs>